Welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. This video is going to be on triglycerides and phospholipids from the biological molecules topic. So first of all, just have a look at the difference between these two lipids that you need to know about. They both contain a glycerol molecule, which is a three carbon compound, and then they contain fatty acids. But a triglyceride, as the name suggests, tri meaning three, has three fatty acid chains. A phospholipid has only two chains, and instead of the third chain, that is replaced by a phosphate group. So looking at how those um, molecules are made, first of all, the triglycerides. So to get the glycerol bonded with those three fatty acids, it involves three separate condensation reactions. So each of the fatty acid chains will go through a condensation reaction with the glycerol. So we end up with three waters being produced and three ester bonds forming. And the ester bond is this bit just here. So where we have um, our carbon, oxygen, um, between just here. So just to show you that all together, we've got our glycerol. We then have three fatty acid chains. We said a water molecule is removed, so that's why it's a condensation reaction. So three water molecules are actually removed, and then we end up with our three ester bonds and three molecules of water. So the fatty acid chains, we saw those labelled, and these sometimes are shown as an R group because the number of carbons and hydrogens can vary. So that's why it's an R, meaning variable group. And there's two different types, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated means that in this hydrocarbon tail, all of the carbons only have single bonds between them. So they're saturated because they're bonding with as many hydrogen atoms as possible. Unsaturated means you have at least one double bond between the carbons and therefore you're not holding the maximum number of hydrogen atoms that you could. But these two sentences here are the exact definitions and I've underlined between the carbons because on the AQA mark scheme if you don't state that the double bond or single bond is between the carbons you would not get that mark. So let's have a look at some of the properties then of the triglycerides. So number one, these lipids, these triglycerides, one of their main functions is for energy storage. And the reason they store so much energy is because there's a large ratio of a particular type of bond which holds a lot of energy. And that is these carbon to hydrogen bonds compared to the number of carbon atoms. So because there are so many carbon to hydrogen in that fatty acid tail, it stores a lot of energy. We also have a high ratio of hydrogen atoms compared to oxygen, um, and this enables it to act as a metabolic water source. Now, what we mean by that is, if the triglyceride is broken down, and in particular if it's oxidised, it's able to form water molecules. And this is why lots of desert animals store triglycerides. So, for example, camels, the hump on their back, um, unlike the misconception, it's not a hump of water. It is actually a hump of triglycerides. And that will provide water when the triglycerides are oxidised. So another property that's a huge advantage is triglycerides, because they are so big, um, they are hydrophobic, meaning they repel water, so they're insoluble. And this means you can store lots and lots of this triglyceride away as an energy storage without it affecting the water potential. Therefore, it won't affect osmosis, causing too much water to move into the cell, making cells burst. So that is a huge advantage. Lastly, lipids such as triglycerides are relatively low in mass. And when I say relatively low, I'm comparing that to tissues like muscles, for example. So muscles are far more dense than lipids. And the reason that's an advantage is you can store lots of lipids for this energy storage without making the animal too heavy and therefore restricting their movement. 
Right, so let's have a look then at the test for lipids known as the emulsion test. So you need to dissolve your sample in ethanol. So I'm just adding some oil here, first of all. Then I'm adding my ethanol. And to dissolve, shaking it up. Next, you add distilled water and you have to shake again. And then finally, it's describing what the positive observation looks like. And it is white in colour. And we describe it as an emulsion. And it's really, really important that you use that word, not precipitate. Precipitate means you've made a solid and we haven't made a solid. Emulsion means you have split apart, in this case the lipids, into such tiny droplets that they're all surrounded by the water that you get this thick liquid consistency that we call an emulsion, but it is not solid. So white emulsion is the positive result. So lastly then is the phospholipids. So the structure of phospholipids we saw right at the beginning. You still have a glycerol molecule, you still have fatty acids, but you only have two. So the third fatty acid chain has been replaced by a phosphate group. They're created in the same way. It'll be condensation reactions between the glycerol and the fatty acids. But because we only have two chains, there'll only be two ester bonds forming. The properties then are quite different because of this phosphate group. And we can see here on the phosphate group that we have a negative charge. And due to that charge on the phosphate group, it gives the property of what we call hydrophilic head. And we describe it as the head. So it's a hydrophilic head, and that means it's able to attract and interact with water. In comparison, the fatty acids don't have any charges on them, so they are hydrophobic. Hydro meaning water, phobic meaning fearing. Now what we mean by that in science is it repels. So the tails repel water, but they're able to mix and interact with lipids. Now because of those properties, phospholipids, when they're put into water, arrange themselves in this two layer structure which we call the bilayer a phospholipid bilayer and that is the structure that you see on membranes so for example the cell surface membrane but also in eukaryotic cells the membranes on organelles so it's this double layer or bilayer of phospholipids where the tails move inwards because they're repelled by water but they can interact with the lipids and the hydrophilic heads move to the outside because those can interact with water. So we do describe phospholipids as being polar because of these two different charged regions. So for the lipid, just make sure you do know the structure of a triglyceride and phospholipid, how they're formed by condensation reaction and the bonds that is made, their function, the properties that is, and how you test for lipids. So the emulsion test. I hope that you have found this helpful today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to keep up to date on all of the latest videos.